Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Underbelly Hours. I've got some great guests for you today. The Bellow and the Whale are back to talk about their new EP and lots of other fun shenanigans. Spoiler alert. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's fantastic. In fact, pause this video and go listen to it if yeah. you haven't already. Then come back and watch the rest of the interview. It's amazing. It's pretty great. They're, I think I said it, introducing them. They're just like, obviously top three or, or top five of like all the local people in yeah they're sorry fabulous i have favorites <laughs> yeah it's what we do a little but they're bit amazing here. they're really really good uh and let's kick this show off i'm adela and i'm dan and you're listening to the underbelly hours in my basement i can't stay a while like listening to new music want to know a band before they get popular Tune into the Underbelly Hours, Sunday nights at 6 p.m. on WRSC 88.7 FM, and discover the best of local unsigned musicians. Don't miss out on the next big thing. All right, of course, you know, we, we really want to get to this interview with the Bell on the Web, but before we do, we have to talk about new music that has been released uh, and that we've been listening to because a lot of good things have been popping up, and uh, we want to make sure we share them with you when they do. We want to make sure the great stuff is heard. <laughs> Correct. The good stuff is getting out there. You can trust us. You can trust our tastes. We're not going to steer you wrong and make you listen to some Norwegian deathcore band that is trying to be the next whatever <laughs> is popular in that realm. No, we're going to give you the, the I don't know. We're just going to give you good tunes. We're just going to so, give you good tunes. Um, starting off this week of new releases is... I'm, I'm gonna start us off. You're gonna start. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But ahead. I think you know who I'm gonna. I think I know who you're gonna do it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Can you guess? Ryan Herrick. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> who, who else? else? <laughs> Ryan Herrick, my man, put out his uh, new instrumental EP of C, and it is so pleasant. It's a great one. It's, it's a great one. It's so serene and uh, tranquil and peaceful and makes you just feel yeah at peace it just makes you feel zen it, mm -hmm. it it clears out all the negativity and all the bats in the cave and all the, and the mold yeah. that's gone on it's in your lungs in your lungs from all the i don't know insert whatever the world is right now here <laughs> <laughs> whatever abysmal yes. fate is uh, I think it's very also true to Ryan's like meditative almost nature. I mean, he does a lot of those meditation sessions in the morning. He used to do live no, streams he, of. He, he still just, does. He them. did one just the other day. He did one just the other day. That's where all these tunes kind of were mm -hmm. conceived in those uh, meditative Friday jams. Mm -hmm. That's cool. It's very very peaceful. Like you said, it's a really good antidote to things that are happening right now. Yeah. Because the world kind of still not looking too great. Yeah, it's getting better. They're There's light. To I can see the light. A little bit. Winter's almost to over. Um, I feel like not everyone is so hateful towards each other. There's still obviously like me, 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 yeah. me, me, but I mean, I feel like it's cooling down a bit because mm -hmm. people are realizing, hey. We and need to come together. Right now. Over, over me. Over. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, continue. No, that's all I have. That's all you had I'm to say? I'm going to let the music do the talking. All right. Which song in particular do you have? Uh, I don't know. I feel like we've played the singles, you know, as they released. Yeah. Even though I think um, Inside Your Dreams is still kind of my favorite but I'm pretty sure we played that in one of the After Hours episodes. We did. Mm -hmm. At the so, second one or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Um, let's go with one of the new ones that wasn't a single. Let's do One into One. Mm -hmm. I like that one. What a very zen title, too. Yes. One into One. You're listening to One into One by Ryan Herrick. Gone. The Underbelly Hours in my basement.
fantastic, fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Go stream it now. Go Ryan Herrick. Mm -hmm. see. They can go like all of his pages. I and everything. Wanna, yeah. All right. Uh, for, your turn. for my turn, I would like to bring back. This is not exactly crazy new. But it's a release from 2020 that I missed by an artist that I totally uh, missed until I... Who, who pointed him out? I think it was Jason Van Osdell or something from Demo 312. Mm. I follow his page and his mm. Carcone Car 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 Carne podcast. Car Car Car? Car <laughs> Car Car Car? Yeah. Uh, and I think he mentioned this Remember. guy Remember. for one of his... When he was talking about new music. And I was like, huh, why what else? Just sounds like a fun name. I'll go check him out. And dang, am I glad that I checked is him out. Is she glad? He is really freaking good. Like, he's got a very soulful, like, retro soulful feel to his music. It's really, really good. Um, he's got a great backing band behind him, too. They're so tight. Um, it lets Wyatt kind of do whatever he wants to do with his voice, like embellishments, um, over the main melody and everything like uses that. Uses his voice as an instrument, kind he of. He does use his voice as an instrument. It shows. He's got a really quite a few good singles out. I don't think he has like a full length EP or album right now, but the one that I think would be really fitting, especially for now since Valentine's Day is coming up, is you. Um, it's a really, it's like a six minute, 15 second long, slow jam, just like a romantic kind of like from like the seventies kind of feeling just funk, but like slow and down mm. and just like stretched out. It's so, so the groove is so nice and his voice sits beautifully on top of it. And it's like, damn, I just wanted to go on for another like tw 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you know, it's a really good track. Highly recommend it. Let's take a listen right now. You're listening to You by Wyatt Waddell on The Underbelly Hours in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Welcome, everybody. Thanks for listening to our little new music segment. But now we have to move on to the featured event of this interview, which is a return by some artists that we both really, really love and enjoy. They have fantastic music, fantastic just artistic, I don't know, sensibilities. They have great everything. Their visuals are beautiful, and I can gush about them all day, but I'll let them gush. Seriously, yeah. I'll let Definitely them... in, like, the top five. Yeah. Top three, maybe. Definitely. Yeah. We'll let them gush for themselves, though. <laughs> Welcoming to the show, the Bellow and the Whale. How are you guys today? Hello. Hi. Thank you for having us. We're fabulous over here. Yeah, we're having a great day. How about you? Pretty good. It's pretty cold. Um, a tad bit chilly. It could be a little less cold. As you can tell, I'm still, I'm like, half wearing my, my, my jacket because it's not quite that warm to take it all the way off yet. Yeah, um, we're, we're in a basement. Yeah. That doesn't really have well, any heat. It so. lends for a cool, <laughs> romantic, chic look. Like, <laughs> ooh, chic. <laughs> Thank you. Chic. Ooh. Well, that's really appreciated. Um, I love the word chic. She's the word yeah. chic. It's got a nice little I, I sucked at, at using her, though, in, in Smash Bros. Chic. That was kind of, yeah. <laughs> oh. Me, me too, and I always played her because I thought yeah. I was going to be able to get back up on the platform, but right. I couldn't transform yeah, <laughs> yeah. It took me forever to also realize that like how to transform into Sheik while She's playing Zelda. Yeah, no, it was. She's really speedy. Yeah. She's really fun. But anyway, any hoodles. We'll uh, talk about that on our Smash Bros podcast. <laughs> That's right. Uh, the underbelly Smash Bros. I don't know. The underbelly Smash Hours. <laughs> Smash Hours. In any case, yeah. So. Uh, let's get back to the topic on here, which is the bell and the whale. Um, since this is 
Well, this is this is not your first time on the show. You guys have been on the show before, but just as a little quick introduction to people who haven't heard you before and don't know who you are, could you guys introduce yourselves, what you do in the band, and as well as your furry little friend there? Uh, well, most importantly, this is Bijou over here. Um, she's she's great. She's very loud most of the time. That's why I'm holding her. Um, and I'm Bianca. I sing and write music and take photos and video and stuff like that. And I'm Julia, and I'm also an illustrator as well as also singing and playing the guitar for The Bell and the Whale. And together we make what we call folk, soul, pop music. Neo-folk soul? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we do a bit of genre hopping, but that, that's kind of home base for us. Um, yeah, yeah, Julia also plays violin and mandolin and piano and a bunch of other things that I, I wish I could play. Nice. Awesome. I try. <laughs> very, very cool. Um, well, like we said, this isn't your first rodeo here on the Underbelly Hours, so if you guys want to go back and listen to their full backstory and everything, feel free to check out the previous podcast that we've had with the Bellow and the Whale, but for now... Is that a, gonna, about a year ago? Or over a year ago now? It's over a year ago now. Oh, yeah. Because 2020 was last year, bro. I don't, let's not talk about that. <laughs> that didn't... That didn't happen. Yeah. yeah. We're... Well, the highlight of 2020 was talking to you. We were sitting at the desk in my old studio in Chicago. Oh, I guess it was, it was 2020. Yeah. Okay, okay. It was it? Yeah, it yeah. was definitely pandemic time because otherwise I think we would have been with you. That's yeah. true. Um, that makes sense. Yes. Wow. Well, in any of the case. Back in the Zoom days. In the Zoom days. <laughs> if you wish to watch the Zoom interview, you could do so. Um, but we're going to just jump in with a little bit of a game here that I yeah. don't really know if you guys have played with us before. I don't think so. No. So, uh, I think we did Synthesis last time. We did so Synthesis. We're going to go through your catalog <clears throat> and play a new game. Yeah. Uh, it's called the Rapid Fire Game, or Rapid Fire 5 Second. I don't know. We're bad with names, but the, base, <laughs> the basic point of the game is that we, in rapid fire succession, throw out some of your songs song titles, and within five seconds you have to describe what they mean to you, uh, either lyrically or just musically. Basically, yeah, you gotta describe the song in five seconds, and then we move right along to the next one. And we have a total of, what, five songs that we do this for-ish? Sure, or we could do more. Or we we'll see. More. We'll see how they handle it. Okay, we'll see, we'll see how they handle it. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, five seconds for each track. I will be keeping track of the time, and I'll tell you when time is up. So, My heart is racing. You know, so much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Without further ado, Dan, are we ready? Sure. I'll start off with your list. <laughs> this is just all the from the recent EP. Oh, okay. Then I will pull up this thing. All right. Okay. And... Oh, so you say it, and then I press start. Go. Okay. Plastic Dinosaur. Ooh, ah, uh, me. Okay, so Plastic Dinosaur is a song that I wrote about Time. a particular summer. <laughs> My word. Gosh, I could have been speedier. Okay. All right. I understand now you what it, I need. You got it now? <laughs> so say it one more time. I don't think they heard. My worry. Uh, um, Anxiety and... Um, climate change. <laughs> yeah. Climate. A little bit. Or a little bit. Being uncool. Getting time. older. <laughs> okay. Lion's share. Ooh. Demons inside. Time. <laughs> Darkness. Right by my Circus side. Circus Uh, uh, time. Failure. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Risen. Oh, written by Bianca's sister Chachi. Plastic dinosaur. Uh, friendship, summertime, um, our time. Yes. And then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All I think right. I think we'll we'll end there. What? That was good. That was a good job. You guys did good. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's it's also hard with like Skype because there's a slight delay. Um, it's a little bit easier if you guys are in person, but I think you still did pretty well. The effect still, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's fine. The time limit is actually super helpful for us. I think <laughs> <laughs> we can be quite wordy. <laughs> Well, good news, because our new format, we only give you 10 seconds for each question that we ask. Awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, so with all of that, though, you guys have heard a little bit, a couple of words here and there that, like, summarize these songs that we're about to go into more detail on. 
But uh, with that, let's introduce the audience, especially those who haven't listened to Bell on the Way before, to your music. Um, what do you think off of the newest, let's go off the newest EP, what do you think off the newest EP would be a good track to begin the show with? Should we start up things off on a cheery note? With yeah. A bit? Yeah. All right. Well, I think a little bit, maybe. Right. If you want. <laughs> Boom. So you're listening to Little Bit by Bello and the Whale on... The Underbelly Hour. In my basement. That was a little bit a lovely tune by a lovely band who has a lovely new EP, but also kind of two new EPs. Um, well, you released the previous one. We don't think we even got a chance to talk about that since the last time you were here. Um, the newest one is Wild Dogs Howling, but the one before that is The Noise Still Lingers. So we have a lot of things that we could uh, just go delve into, I think, on this episode. But... I guess you already started describing this a little bit, and I don't want to do too much backstory because we've already talked to you before in previous podcasts, but just to sum up before we go into the new works, can you describe what Bellow and the Whale's essence, I guess, is to those who don't know about your project? Yeah, we. Um, so both of us have a visual art background. Bianca is a photographer and a designer, and I'm an illustrator. Um, and we both grew up in very musical households. Bianca comes from a house that was just steeped in soul music and musical theater and harmony singing. Um, and I grew up in a house where we were listening to a lot of folk and bluegrass music and also doing harmony singing with siblings. And so um, we, when we met, we decided that we wanted to do a project that was kind of gelling all of these different elements together. So um, that's why you might notice kind of a more soul and R&B flavor to the Noise Still Lingers EP. 
and a bit of a folkier feel um, to wild dogs howling. But um, yeah, it was really important to us for both of them to create a body of, of artwork, visual artwork that um, is inspired by the music that we're making as well. Yeah, and collaboration with other artists is also a really big part of what we do. So those visual elements, um, we like to kind of throw out those stories to people and see what we get get back and see if we can collaborate with other people. So The Noise Still Lingers, we collaborated with um, a bunch of uh, video uh, artists um, and dancers. And uh, this one we collaborated with our good friend Sarah Anderson uh, on a bunch of visual stuff. Yeah, she she took all of the photographs that we're release, releasing along with Wild Dogs Howling. Mm-hmm. And actually, the guys that did um, a music video for the previous release are Chicago people. They're Andrew, uh, Andrew Palmer um, and Jordan Silander. And Mickey Parks is a dancer from Chicago and contortionist. She's amazing. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> um, yes. So, um, those were just some examples of people that we're trying to collaborate with. Visually. Visually, yes. Mm-hmm. Because Was that we Andrew also. Robert Palmer? I don't uh, different Andrew Palmer? Di- not, dif- not Andrew, Robert Palmer, right? Andrew. Just Andrew and- Palmer? I don't think it's yeah. Arp. I don't yeah, think okay. it's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, was, I don't know. If it, if, but He's got a, a giant mohawk. Yeah, no, that's definitely not. not. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, no, one of the things that I always tout about, uh, about you is um, your visual aspect and your attention to detail on the, the visual side of things, because... Not only is your music amazing, but every visual aspect that goes along with it is really uh, fun, and like there's a lot of depth to it. You can there's a energy, there's like a story, with mm-hmm. even just the pictures you use for um, promotion, promotion see, and yeah. album covers and stuff like that. You know, it's it's refreshing when a lot. I get a little tired of the brick wall. Yeah. I'm getting a little tired. <laughs> man, leather jackets against a brick wall. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's nice, but it's not nice. It's Challenging a little... <laughs> So uh, yeah, that's just one of my favorite things, and it's Thank cool you. to hear about your um, illustration background and background videography and stuff like that. Was that always kind of being worked on in tandem with your music, uh, developing side by side, or did you like start out in film or illustration or video and then start doing all the well i know you came from musical households but i guess like yeah when did you guys start really gelling those together using them together yeah yeah i mean like our um i guess like they've always kind of woven themselves together as far as our collaboration goes we started out just working on um a piece of music with the goal of filming a video of us doing a live performance of it but pretty early on, um, we decided that it was important to incorporate those visual elements um, to try to create a story around the music that we were making. Um, Is there ever a time where you have like a visual idea and you want to write the song around that? Or is it usually the visual you're weaving around the song that's already written? Um, for, for me, very often, songs will start from either um, like a visual image that I come across in life or some words and phrases that I come across. Um, so usually there might be a little seed of a, an image that I want to include in a song, which will then grow into the, the artwork that accompanies a song. But sometimes, you know, as you're you're writing a song, the words will create a new picture, or mm. somebody else will see something in that 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 sends you in another direction for the uh, for illustration purposes. Yeah, I think for me, it's kind of the opposite. The music comes first, and then I'll sit with it for a while, and and the visuals will come afterwards. Mm-hmm. All right. Is there ever a, is there an example where, like, yeah, you thought it was going someplace and then the, the visual side, like you said, kind of d- 
developed into, like, it took a different path and you kind of had to adjust the song, maybe? Mm. Uh, I don't know if, um, usually the artwork is kind of, like, coming about either while we're re- recording or or even after the song has always been recorded already been recorded so I'm not sure if it's ever kind of worked the opposite way where the visual stuff has um influenced the way that a recording goes Mm -hmm. um but certainly uh external things have affected the visual direction that we've gone in like for right by my side um when we were working on the music video for that Um, with Jordan and Andy we started thinking about um, they brought they brought to us a bunch of imagery that had like springtime images juxtaposed with kind of like death and dirty cityscapes so we started thinking about um, the myth of Persephone the Homeric hymn to Demeter in the context of that music video which ended up totally inspiring the album artwork for the noise still lingers. Hmm. Um, so yeah, that was kind of like a curious path that totally happened because we were working with those guys. <laughs> Very right. cool. And it's cool to see too, just from a going on like your Instagram standpoint, um, where the shifts happen in image for or concept for a certain EP into next EP. Like, you know, I didn't necessarily realize how much soul influence was in the noise still lingers like on the first listen but then you look at the visuals and everything's like totally reinforcing that yeah okay this is like a slightly different more aesthetic then you see a change completely into um the next one which is wild dogs howling and i think that's super super cool because not only is it interesting from just like a single photo's perspective but i feel like it's a good strategy too to, to draw in a new audience, especially on such a, you know, photo heavy space that we have right now with social media, where everything yeah. is so influenced by visuals. Um, I think more musicians could really use a little bit of thinking about, you know, us, me included. I don't know um, how to grab the attention span of those audiences from a different perspective. Um, and I want to kind of dive into, if you don't mind, the different ideas you guys have had for Noise Still Linkers and Wild Dogs Howling, because they are very different. Um, how does the visual element of Wild Dogs Howling, and I noticed that there's like a lot of nature in it, there's a lot of, um, you mentioned a little bit in one of your stories that uh, it kind of, some of your photos are playing into stereotypes of women beauty. Um, how do those visual elements tie together into the story that you're trying to tell in Wild Dogs Howling? Mm. A a lot of those photographs, um, the ones with the plastic dresses, um, were sparked by the song My Worry. Um, Kind of, I think all of the ones that we did with the, the plastic dresses and if there's a few upcoming ones where we're wearing these kind of like tin foil looking <laughs> outfits. Those came from that song because um, the song is about, I, I started that song thinking about my own personal experience with anxiety. And then when I brought it to Bianca, she's like, what if we, um, in the you know subsequent verses, kind of zoom out and think about what our collective societal anxieties might be. And so we were thinking about climate change and pollution when we were writing that song. Mm -hmm. So we were like, then thinking about how can we start to talk about these things maybe through the visual elements. And Sarah Anderson, who we were collaborating with, spotted a field of these burnt Joshua trees that were um, just by the side of the road in uh, near White Sands National Park. And she's like, I, I think it was Sarah that saw that, right? And she was like, I really want to do a photo shoot there. And so then, um, you know, 
she said that in the context of all this stuff kind of like floating through my brain. And I was like, let's make dresses out of copious amounts of plastic, mm-hmm. but recyclable. <laughs> and, um, so the dresses are recyclable and reusable. But yes. yeah, that, that came from just thinking about like access and pollution and climate change. And then, um, then there's like another strand of images that, um, that Bianca uh, was thinking about that is the the photos that you were talking about that are maybe critiquing a portrayal of femininity femininity were something that yeah uh, Bianca we're, was thinking about we were kind of thinking about this idea of femininity femininity throughout the work. ages and um, kind of how ridiculous it can be that we see this like doll-like figure of ourselves and that's what people have kind of appreciated before instead of just appreciating kind of who we are. So we wanted to like do a bit of a satire on that and and make fun of it a bit and- Mm -hmm. um, And have a lot of silly fun while we were (laughs) doing doing it. So it looks like you guys really take it um, instead of, well, in a way you have a a photo for the album that represents the album, right? But you go into each song, song by song, you pick art to go with it. Um, Is there like a bigger cohesive theme within the EP itself, do you think? Apart from a musical sensibility of maybe this is more folk oriented? um, Or are these just little vignettes basically all in the collection of a single EP? Well, I I think that um anxiety and um uh and seeking to like <clears throat> overcome things that you um feel are holding you back in your life mm-hmm. are common themes throughout the songs on this ep but maybe that's true of our whole back catalog <laughs> anyway um but um also within that kind of backdrop of anxiousness, there are little vignettes of friendship and um, art and the, these sublime moments that you can find within that. Um, yeah, yeah, kind of this idea of being okay with, this is also a theme that, that runs through all of our music, being okay with where you are and being okay with what the past was and how it has helped to shape you, but not allowing it to define who you are. Um, So I think that that theme and that storyline kind of runs through this as well as um, all of our other work. Do you want to spin a tune? I was just going to yeah, say, we should spin a tune. Mind. There we, we go. Let's spin another tune. Let's spin another tune. And uh, since we mentioned, you guys mentioned rather, that the album EP cover itself was inspired by My Worry, would you like to maybe play My Worry next? That's yeah, great. I think we should play that, yeah. especially because Adela is <laughs> playing that really oh. amazing hook that you'll hear. <laughs> Uh, on the song. You're on everything, aren't you? (laughs) Deep (laughs) stream. So you're listening to My Worry by Bella and the Whale on The Underbelly Hours! Hi, Bruce.
also, side note, I really, really love this song. And not just because the cello was fun to play. Like, it's just such a good Your song. Your ego is showing. Dude. No, I'm just, <laughs> no but it's no, like, should show. That I know. I know. Like, that's what everybody, just... like, everything we submitted to, all of our friends were like, that cello, though. No. That oh, cello, though. Oh. <laughs> Nice. Seriously, every yes. time we hear Retreat it, it's just my... like this huge smile on our faces because it's such a good hook. Thank you. Yeah. It is amazing. It's, it, 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 it stuck out when I was listening to it. Too. Oh was like, my goodness! I <laughs> am a hundred percent. We're making her blush. Yeah, I'm a hundred percent sure that that's Adela. I don't even know, but I just. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. No, but there's like a fun. I love the structure of it because there's like an extra measure that always makes me like. Like, it's just so good in the verses, you know? It's just it's just such a nice little cliffhanger before you go into the next thing. It's, it feels like you're on a raft, and then, like, you hit a bump, and you're going to go... You know? <laughs> so, anyways. Um, let's stick a little bit more to the visual element, because I'm just curious. I know that we've talked about your musical inspirations a little bit before. What about visual inspirations? Do you guys have any, like, artists or um, photographers that you guys really look up to when you're sitting down to create another project or something like along those lines? Yeah, I mean, so uh, most of my um, illustrations are made with cut paper and sometimes that I paint into them. So a huge influence of mine is Kara Walker, um, who, uh, she has like a level of specificity to her art practice that, um, that maybe mine is a bit more general because I use it in a much more commercial way than she does, but that technique of creating these silhouetted characters that you can kind of project your own meaning onto, um, and that link into this idea of uh, fairy tale. They feel very much related to like Lottie Reiniger's um, uh, animations. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but she actually cut silhouetted figures out of very thin pieces of lead and then animated Grimm's fairy tales. Oh, cool. So, like, aesthetically, um, those two artists are really important to me as far as when I sit down to work on a new project for the Bellow and the Whale I would say now I do a lot of research before um, I make a piece of artwork but often it's more around the cultural context than particular artists that are working in that field with the exception of the cover for um, uh, for The Noise Still Lingers there's an artist called Ori Tor who I think he's Israeli, I want to say, but I follow him on Instagram and the color palette and the style of digital drawing was hugely influenced by his work in particular. Yeah, I mean, I think that I'm influenced by quite a bit of the world around me and um, kind of in my, my earlier days of photographing I was really influenced by that kind of like gritty really like street photography style that like Jim Goldberg has um and then I I wanted to create things that felt a bit more like paintings um so I do I use a lot of like overlapping thematic kind of elements in in my visual style um but I'm quite influenced by the visuals of like Bjork, also her <laughs> her sound, her her visual. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, and Jinshik. Yeah, and Jinshin, I feel like there's a lot of cross pollination. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jinshik, we went to school together, and he's this amazing photographer he um one of his biggest influences uh for me was he did this series where he sat with monks for like hours and hours and hours and uh just took one still image of them for hours Mm -hmm. so it's basically just this like this stillness with a 
little bit of movement and you can see the time lapse through. Uh, usually he'll add like a candle or an incense stick in the photograph so you can see just really how long the photograph has been, mm -hmm. uh, shutter has been open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like that visual of the, you know, extended exposure and um, the kind of like overlapping of these ghost-like images are things that I see in your work a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about for those people who, just to play devil's advocate, right, would say, oh, why, if you guys are making music, why are you spending so much time focusing on the visual and um, maybe storytelling elements with your music, doesn't that take away time from writing, recording, et cetera, et cetera? I don't necessarily believe this, but I bet there's someone out there listening who might be thinking something like that. Yeah. Well, truthfully, it does. We have like chosen to divide our time in that way. And I think it's because um, we would both wither and die. <laughs> Um, if we were to give up a, a part of our artistic practice, because we, we see all of these things as like different organs within the body of our art practice. So to abandon one or to undernourish one of those things, I think would negatively affect the overall health of yeah. the body to continue this metaphor far longer than yeah. is necessary. <laughs> I don't really believe that one exists without the other. Mm. I mean, a lot of people will have someone else that does their visual art uh, and they'll focus on the music and that is perfectly wonderful. Uh, but for us, it's just so important to be able to have that visual element and to be able to explore the other part of our brain uh, that kind of goes along with these stories that we're musically telling yeah and it, like of course this idea has occurred to us because one piece of advice that you often hear from very successful musicians and particularly from artists is that you should pick one thing and focus all of your energy on to that one thing so the, we could be shooting ourselves in the foot but at least we're going to be having so much fun before we bleed out <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we won't shoot ourselves in the yeah, I don't think so. we we really hope that that this kind of like overall picture will end up being a boon to us, and you know we hope people see this as as a cohesive practice. But but sure, there the there's definitely people that might say hmm, maybe you should just pick one thing. <laughs> well, I think it's a a testament to your talents then that you are able to do all these things as well as you do because a lot of people who do just put all their eggs in one basket still don't end up <laughs> sounding as good <laughs> yeah in my personal opinion and usually just kind of kind of create some boring stuff or repetitive you know it, I, I think there's something really cool about that philosophy of, of you have to make sure the nutrition is getting to all the organs, the organs and yeah. and uh, yeah I think there's a lot of artists out there that have another side of the artistic expression that they they love to explore and i think yeah more it, people should go for it yeah um, totally. especially nowadays too i think it creates a more interesting experience yes right like i'm always intrigued whenever i see something dropping from bell on the whale if it's just an instagram post i'm like oh does this mean there's new music coming or does it just mean like i have to look at this picture and try and figure out what it means like it, it's cool because it creates a sense of like a continuous little mini drama of the pillow and the whale or something, mm -hmm. you know? There's always something to look forward to. Um, and while I'm sure it's difficult, right? I mean, it does take a lot of time and a lot of creativity con to continuously come up with all of these new ideas. Um, if somebody's out there listening and, and thinking that maybe you can try doing the same thing, I, I definitely think that you should. Yeah. Granted, that as, as long as you know that, right, like Dan said, there is a lot of work that goes into doing all of these different types of things. Yeah, but you won't sleep very much. That's the thing, like, ironically, for the health of your maybe, like, the well-roundedness of your artistic self, you sacrifice a little bit of your physical health by not <laughs> sleeping as much as you should. Yeah. 
Yeah, I never, uh, never liked the whole jack of all trades, master of none argument. Uh, uh, yeah. Especially in today's world, where especially in music, you kind of have to be able to diversify and, and you know develop your skill set because nobody cares if you can shred anymore. You know? Yeah, honestly, <laughs> yeah. honestly, yeah. Yeah, it's right. an interesting interesting world we're entering into. Where you do yeah. where you, the jack of all trades is becoming almost like a necessity if you want to do the things you love to do well. You know? Yeah. So because there's a whole other group of people, the people that are not saying pick one thing and focus on it, who are saying actually you need to get pretty good at doing a lot of different things yeah. in order to feed yourself. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know? And and say yes to different things. Right. Yeah. Have your fingers in lots of pies. That's what the head of my master's course used to say. Have your fingers in lots of different pies. That's. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a little. That's one way to put it. She's Spanish. Spanish. <laughs> ah, those Brits. <laughs> uh, well, he's that... a fork at least. God, you know. Like, <laughs> um, how do you guys uh, balance your time? You, are you are you well structured and you kind of give yourselves like an hour? to work on this or an hour to work on this or are you are you just pretty aware of how much time you're spending on one thing and it's like all right i'm gonna take a break from this and work on this and or is it schedule one o'clock hit the guitar <laughs> no i think i think it depends on the day honestly sometimes we're pretty well structured and sometimes we need a break from it all and so we go snowboarding or go for a walk or something yeah, like that. Like sometimes when there's snow on the hill, that kind of determines our schedule a little bit because mm-hmm. we're like, oh, there's good snow today. We can go snowboarding. Mm-hmm. So we have to get a bunch of work done in the morning so that we have time to go before the slopes close. So I would say like our schedule, at least over the past few weeks, has been largely determined by snowfall. But I... I do not have any sense of how long tasks take me, how long I've been working on something, or how long the same task will take me in the future. So I'm really bad at scheduling. I just, I have this kind of epic ongoing to-do list and just pick one or two things off that to-do list every day and work on them as long as I can keep my eyes open. I try really hard to start out the day making a list of things that I know that I can accomplish in the day. <laughs> and hopefully I will get some of them done. I need to get yes. back on that, that list making Do thing. Do list? Yeah. <laughs> Life I saving. I did it for a couple of days. Oh. Probably the most productive days I had. Yeah, no. Uh, and then I just I fell off because yeah. I, I suck. Well, no, life gets hard, <laughs> I think, sometimes. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, it gets overwhelming. I'm, I'm like a crazy list maker. More than <laughs> I am like a scheduler of things. And I think the key to list making is to break the tasks down into the microest, like the tiniest possible unit of a step that you can. Mm -hmm. So like if you have to do like this big task, you need to break it down as far as you can. Even if that means like email this person this morning, (laughs) rather than like try to create a bunch of contacts. Yeah. Like email one person, that's step one. (laughs) Right. Yeah, totally. No, that's very similar to, well, one, I, I hear a lot of successful people kind of give that advice of make a list, you know, start of the day or the night before, and make sure you at least get, like, so many things off the list. Mm-hmm. And one person that recently I heard that from is, <clears throat> all right, all right, all right, Matthew McConaughey. Are you, are you listening to the book? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got his book and everything. Nice, there you go. There are, people's in, the, there are people in this household that are also listening to yeah. that right now. It's yeah. great. It's, I hear little bits of it. Yeah. It's wonderful. It's, it's very, he's a very interesting guy, but yeah, one of those things that, exactly what you said, you know, make break down the list into the smallest things. Just like, you know, gonna, gotta... <clears throat> make coffee this morning. Right. Well, it helps you feel, especially the big tasks, like, you know, okay, rather than say record a whole song and finish it today, if you break it into the tasks, it'll help you feel that you made the, like, steps that you actually have taken on this yeah. day, rather than, like, looking at your list at the end of the day being like, damn, I still haven't recorded my song. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. Even though I you can't maybe, take like, anything off my list. Right, yeah. and even if maybe you already wrote out the chorus and the structure and everything, and just need a day or two takes, um, 
but see that let's, progress bar. Right, see the prof- eh, progress bar. Go, finish this. 10 XP. There you go. Boom. <laughs> Almost ready to level up. Um, let's throw in another song, though, because we've been chatting again a lot. And um, I want to throw in one from The Noise Still Lingers just to juxtapose the feeling of the two of your newest EPs, right? So off of The Noise Still Lingers, what do you think is... Your computer really wants to yeah, hook up to Wi-Fi. it's stupid. <laughs> I'm just going to turn it off. Um, it's like eight pop-ups. I know. It's, it's <laughs> annoying. Um, noise Still Lingers. Which one do you think is the most dynamic, or not, yeah, just like different sounding um, comparative to Wild Dogs Howling? Which track might be the most different sounding? I think probably something like Stand In would be pretty, pretty different from kind of that like folk bluegrass feel that you get mm -hmm. on, on Wild Dogs Howling. Cool. And actually, right before we play that, can I ask why, with the idea of Wild Dogs Howling being more folk, why did you decide to include My Grave on The Noise That's Still Lingers? Good question. Yeah? I'm just, yeah. I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. uh, it can't be... Uh, that song was sitting on Wild Dogs Howling for a long time, yeah. and it basically came down to us listening to the songs in different orders over the course of weeks <laughs> and deciding that oddly my grave wanted to be with those other songs thematically even though sonically it might it might actually sit better with um dude don't bump the mic <laughs> um with, with the other ep mm -hmm. yeah we kind of also liked the idea of that song is kind of like a funeral march we kind of liked starting everything off at the end, almost, and then making it feel, for us at least, more hopeful. Like, as you progress. Yeah. Yeah, it, it thematically gave the, the um, EP a chance to open up and grow a little bit and tell a story. Cute. Nice. I love that. I actually really love that. Cute's the wrong word. I say cute for everything. It's really awkward. Mm. Um, I started saying it can, that to It can people. come off as condescending, too, sometimes. Yeah. If you if you use yeah. the wrong tone. Yeah. Like, oh, that's cute. It's like, right. I don't know. Well, thanks. It's, it's at the point. It's so bad, guys. It's at the point where I don't even know myself sometimes what I mean when I say. <laughs> I've been there. You know? No, that, that's anyway, let's get some song in here. They're about to listen to Stand In by the Bellow and the Whale on The Underbelly Hour. In my basement.
you have to come up with something new every time. That's true. Yeah. You'd be like the epic rap battles of history guy, where like, just make up some crazy voice and try and do variations on that. Actually, Josh, can you uh, splice Adam Neely's bass and yeah. just always <laughs> insert it <laughs> yeah. whenever I say yes. basement? Yeah. And throw the throw the the graphic up there of a bass. <laughs> bass. Bass. Nice. Yes. Please. <laughs> Nice, nice. Tick-tock-a-bowl. Tick-tock-a-bowl. <laughs> hey. Oh, there man. Actually, hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, Question time. I don't know if I can hold this table up by myself. Okay, don't hold it up. That's okay. fine, that's fine. I didn't mean it in that sense. Uh, <laughs> so that's a wonderful song. We just listened to Standing by the Bell and the Whale. And just offhand, someone of the two duo right there said something about TikTok. And then made me wonder... For a group that's so visually just, uh, like, your visuals are so important to you, have you considered joining TikTok? That's your TikTok game. <laughs> yeah. And if so, what stages are you in the entering TikTok world? So, um, my experience with TikTok is that um, I saw it and hated it. But I know that it's very important to a lot of independent musicians. And I don't want to make anybody feel bad about it, but we put that question up on our Facebook and asked if we should join TikTok. And my sister like almost instantaneously came back with a bunch of articles about nefarious things that TikTok are doing. And I'm sure that other platforms that we do engage with are also doing nefarious <laughs> activities. Everyone's but we shan't sucked. name them so that we don't get blocked <laughs> and censored. But um particularly like uh, some of TikTok's actions that were negatively affecting people in Hong Kong. Uh, mm -hmm. We just decided maybe not, maybe we'll pass. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's fair but enough. But also I hate it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I hated Likewise. it so much as well at first. Yeah, but hold up, hold up. There are some, okay. I Again, see... I can't hold up the table by myself. <laughs> Sorry. Wait, uh, uno momento. I don't because... speak Spanish. <laughs> um, I totally agree with TikTok being a strange app. I don't like it in the term. It just It's got some weird morals and stuff, but I do want to say that I have seen musicians using it very well and in interesting ways. Like, they've been duetting each other, they've been kind of creating a community where they continuously bounce off of each other's ideas. So I think in that respect, it's really interesting. Um, but I totally stand by your decision not to join TikTok. It makes sense. Just wanted to put two cents out there that I have seen lots of really interesting creative things yeah. happen on that platform that aren't just really fake scripted, awfully acted videos. Exactly. Yeah. That, that is true. And, and many indie bands that we know, have, uh, know of have used it in a way that... Um, or actually like just made their songs available on it and others have used them in a way that's opened up whole new audiences to them. So I, I think it's done really great stuff for bands like Mother Mother, I know specifically, mm. um, like suddenly started getting millions of new streams because of a bunch of like Gen Zers on TikTok <laughs> using their songs. And that that's so awesome. Like if, if that, you know, opens up more avenues for them then that's great mm -hmm. cool i downloaded it looked at a few and i was like yeah it's not for me <laughs> I, I yeah i downloaded it with the intention of like i'm going to learn how to use this to try and like maybe come up with some stuff for the underbelly hours and i was like this weekend i'm just going to go through a bunch and see what's like trending and stuff and it, couldn't, couldn't do it. I, I also feel like <laughs> you have to have a certain personality type i honestly don't think we would be good for TikTok. I don't know what we can do. <laughs> it's a very particular sense of humor, isn't it? Yeah. And, yeah. like, when I saw that, I was like, I don't understand kids. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm old now because I don't yeah. get it. <laughs> Dude, I'll say. Yeah, there was a couple. We were looking at a couple last night, Josh, where I was like, is, this is really what aging feels like. <laughs> no. I'm like, I'm not getting this. I'm. I'm only 26. Dude. I mean, dang. Yeah. But there was a couple funny ones. There's, <laughs> There's always the diamonds and the... Yeah. But uh, anyways, back to better things. Your music. Yay! 
Um, before we played a song, we were talking about how, why you included um, my, my grave. grave into the noise still lingers. Mm-hmm. Why, may I ask, um, did you guys bring back Plastic Dinosaur for yeah! the latest EP? Because that was that. that was released a while back, like a couple 20, years ago. Nineteen. Right? So what made that fit into this new EP? You think that you wanted to bring it back? We That's thought, plastic. Um, even though it's not sitting right next to it, that the energy really was jiving with a uh, little bit. Mm. And um, even though like there's definitely some like pop rock elements to that song, it definitely has that like folky swing and we wanted to bring that energy into the middle of this EP because um, and actually Risen ended up coming out with um, a bit more of like a hopeful upbeat feeling to the yeah. music. Yeah, Risen is normally sung by us in a very like downbeat um yeah down tempo kind of melancholy way um but yeah we just wanted to inject some energy and fun into the ep nice. fair enough it's one of my favorites i love it it's so I cute it. i also love the um is the youtube video still up for that plastic dinosaur yeah. with the cute little animation that was that was yeah. nice go check it out everyone go Do look it. at it it's very cute it's very nice. That's me trying to figure out how to draw a dinosaur for hours on the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> on top of my puppet hands. Yeah. <laughs> well, it turned out wonderfully, so go check that out. Um, I don't know. I have one kind of final question, but I'm not really... It doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about, so we're just going to... I'm just going to throw it in there. because I saw your website changed a little bit recently. It's very intrigued by it. Um... It's very minimalistic. So compared to like your Instagram, right, which has a lot of different visual elements, everything's popping, very bright and colorful. Your YouTube channel is very bright and colorful. And then you go to your website and it's just like blank. And it's only like words that are typed out. It's got sections by like genre and stuff rather than um, the typical artist, bio, music, tabs. So I wonder... Why go in that direction for your website? Um, yeah, just go just explain a little bit of the thought process behind that because I thought it was really interesting. I think kind of initially we were we were playing with this idea of uh, choose your own adventure, and <laughs> since a lot of our music uh, does have uh, different sound elements and does kind of fit into different genres we thought it would be interesting for people to be able to like kind of go in and choose what type of music they like and then hear hear that music and then be able to kind of explore from there and there are little elements that you can kind of play around with like on the bottom of the website there are little kind of squares that you can spin around and um in little kind of micro interactions that go along with things so we thought that would be a fun fun way of doing it that would perhaps be more interactive and also you know we didn't want to have a website that was going to do the same thing that our instagram does Mm. or our spotify page you know because you can access those bio things and hear the music and look at the visuals on those other platforms. So mm-hmm. we figured, cool. you know, when, when people really need to have access to all of that in a concise format, we have press kits that we email directly to people, but mm-hmm. you know, why not have more fun with the website? Yeah. Cool. Is there any, uh, potential written stuff in the process? I know that you guys have written out like little Instagram posts before of like kind of poetic, slash prose things um but on the website or in any of your upcoming works are you thinking of featuring more actual just like written out stories or are you thinking of keeping just to the visual and musical storytelling for now um there does exist some written stuff yeah in different (laughs) places but i would i would say that 
in the near future, it's going to be mainly visual things that are coming out, photography, um, some animation, um, yeah, along with the music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is, there is a, a, you probably can't see it, but mm -hmm. it's behind us, a little kind of coffee table prototype book that, that we've created. Um, Ooh. That, there's a little fluffy. There's a little fluffy. Yeah, fluffy there's a fluffy two. tail. Oh my gosh, sorry. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> cute. It's wonderful. Oh, hello. He's a big fluffy. He's a big fluff <laughs> compared to the small fluff. Nice. So you said coffee book table though, so it's gonna be like a photo book or something. It's like that? not photo. It's it's basically all words. It's oh. It's kind of created so the reader can really use their imagination to play with the story. Mm. Um, and it's not bound together, so it can go in any different order. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, cool. that's very cool. Yeah. yeah. So they're, they're kind of like you mentioned the captions on our Instagram. They, mm -hmm. It's very much like that. So they're, they're kind of like little fragments of story that you can rearrange how you want. Ooh, that's so exciting! Yeah, that, yeah, oh my gosh, really cool. please tell us if that ever like comes out into public and you guys decide to sell them because we'll definitely pick some up. Uh, uh, yeah, we have a prototype of it, but we need to figure out how to mass produce. Or maybe we'll just make the prototype available and see yeah. if somebody wants it. <laughs> cool stuff. Awesome. Um, well, I, I think that might be a show. I think right that there. might be it for now, honestly. Unless, is there something that you guys really wanted to, since you have the captive attention of our listeners, is there anything that you would really want to uh, just talk about or specify about your recent releases that we haven't gone over right now? I mean, I think, I think for us it's really interesting and important to be able to collaborate with other people and the dogs are starting to play now <laughs> um so we'd love it if anyone would reach out to us if they want to collaborate on something something visual or something musical we're totally open and down for yeah. like that or even if you just want to talk about how depressed you are over covid like get in touch with us <laughs> over our instagram over our facebook um we'd be really happy to connect with anybody who might be listening oh <laughs> wow we gave them a chance to talk about themselves and to like <laughs> splurge and they decided to talk about others that should tell you the <laughs> kind of people the fellow and the whale are that's so sweet Lovely. And how bad we are at self-promotion. <laughs> <laughs> no. So be sure to find Bell and the Whale on all streaming platforms, on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, not TikTok. Check um, out their website. Check out their website, which is really fun, interesting, and funky. And yeah, I think, uh, thanks guys for joining us. This has been a very insightful chat. Really appreciated it. Quite lovely. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> and talking to us. Our deepest pleasure yeah it is our <laughs> pleasure as well mm -hmm. we wish you the best of luck with all your uh, future projects and can't wait to see more so uh, when you guys get the next big batch of, of awesome things that you will do come back on the show and we will gladly force it down everyone else's thing. <laughs> awesome. they need to hear awesome. thank you <laughs> no but seriously if you guys haven't listened to the bell of the whale i know we gush about them a lot yeah we, we do but there's a reason <laughs> <laughs> They're yeah. just so good. Uh, and I guarantee there's something for everyone if you listen to their music. Something will grab your attention and will pull you in for sure. So. Yeah. Thanks again, guys. Have a lovely rest of your Thank day. You. Thank you, Toodles. All right. And, of course, if you want to listen to the Underbelly Hours <laughs> and more. <laughs> Sorry, it's cold on here. Redo. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Had to wake up a bit, you know. <laughs> For you audio listeners, that was exactly what you think it was. <laughs> and for you uh, video watchers. You know, the truth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and of course, if you feel like listening to more of the Underbelly Hours, talking about new music, local music, interviews, and uh, music rants that we happen to have on our mind, you can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, 
YouTube is our newest platform, which you should go and subscribe to, as well as all streaming yeah, right. platforms. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, okay, okay. yeah. Go check us out on YouTube so you can see uh, all the faces I'm making. Yeah. <coughs> all the pain that Dan's in right now. Yeah. And all my grimacing glory. <laughs> Uh, but I think that's a wrap, and that's been another episode. That has been another episode of The Underbelly Hours in my basement. You're Dan. You're Adela. Bye! Are you tired of listening to the same bands over and over again? Over and over and over. Stop listening to what mainstream media chooses for you. You filthy casual. And try something new. Tune in to the Underbelly Hours for exclusive interviews, unreleased content, and more from the depths of Chicago's underground. I'm Adela. I'm Dan. I got a cold, stay a while. Now available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or anywhere you stream your podcasts, thanks to Ox Audio, a Chicago-based podcasting platform.